Mailbag time. Let's see what we've got this time. As always, the links down below if I'll give you links for things. Spudges. These are some quite thin ones, look. Black, like a lever wedge ending. See that quite well there. So it's a set of a whole bunch of different ones. Wide ones. That's an interesting one. This one's got a sideways lever. It's like a roller. <laughs> Hmm. There's different shapes of spudges. Spiky one. More flat ones, like a wedge one. It's a really thin one, that one. Cool. All these different shapes. It's a bit like a scalpel type, another spiky type one. I was thinking of this kind of thing for doing like flex cables inside computers so you can get underneath them and hook them out or hook them in. Cool. Nice. Now if you're doing a particular task repeatedly you might find this a particular shaped tool which would be useful for that and it will depend a lot on what you're doing I suppose. Yeah, a bunch of cables, what are these? IJ45, one metre. It says class 7, so I'm guessing these are Cat 7 cables. All the same? It might all be the same. Yep, all the same cable. So, this Ethernet cables, I'm actually going to upgrade my network as much as I can. So, yep, Cat 7 cable, shielded plugs. Nice. High quality. So I've only got four of those because that's all I'm going to need for what I'm doing. At least I think so. I'm going to upgrade my network to 10 gigabit. Now the only thing is with that is that I wish I actually upgraded my computer, but um, I didn't. Hmm, okay, what is this? Ah, uh, right, okay, chargers. MagSafe 2 T chargers, all the same kind of. So we've got 60 watt chargers, 85 watt chargers. This is because I've got a bunch of MacBooks recently and I've been repairing them. And there'll be videos about those if you haven't already seen some. I need chargers for those computers. So non branded, they're not Apple ones, right? They're aftermarkets. Let's see where they go. I mean, they look like decent quality. So that's 60 watt and 85 watt. Basically the same cable stuff. This the 85 watt is meant for like a 15 inch computer. The 60 watt is meant for the 13 inch. And there's also I think it's a 45 watt. I think it is. And that's meant for the 11 inch computers. Although you can use basically any charger in your computer, but obviously you're going to get a slower charging rate if you're using an underpowered charger. But, but you can also use an 85 watt or 60 watt on a 11 inch so I can do it just probably best not to really but yeah anyway so chargers I think I'm probably gonna need to get some more depends on how many end up fixing in the end but so far my success rate has been pretty good so I'm probably gonna have to go buy some more feels like there's a few things in this one so find out oh yeah just a few what we got another Ethernet cable cat 6a Three meters. These are super thin ones. Really thin ones. These are U greens. They're all the same. Six A. Two meters. Point five meters. Point five meters. Two meters. Yep. But these are just. I don't know how they make them this small. I don't know how good they are compared to like normal cables. But they're class six, so. How bad they can they be? I don't know. And they're U Green. I mean, U Green's a recognised brand these days. Well, they're known for doing quite well. So, and also got this. So, tyre inflator. So it's a battery powered one. Looks nice enough. Little carry strap, I'm not quite sure I'll trust it to be honest. But you've got one a little bag to put it in. We've got a 
USB-C charging cable, we've got an airline to go with it, and which is very short, and some adapters, standard kind of adapters for different things. Also you've got the main one here which will be for doing tyres, car tyres and things like that. Um, that screws in there. Now this is not a very long hose, so if you've got quite a large wheel, it may not even reach the top of the tyre. It probably wouldn't actually on a larger one. So that's a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. I didn't actually pay attention to that when I bought it, but um, I'm surprised I didn't make that longer. It might mean you have to end up, end up having to hold the thing up whilst you're using it. You've got some buttons here. There we go, turned on. Uh, you can set pressures, 36. So this is PSI. What's it go up to? Let's find out. It probably says so in instructions somewhere. There you go, we passed it. So 65 psi max, 3 minimum. So that's fine. And half psi steps, which is perfectly fine. And to be honest, if you didn't step to 1 psi increments, I thought that would be fine. Because air pressure is a bit of a funny thing, because it varies a lot with temperature. Yeah, it varies a lot with temperature. So as something gets hotter, the air pressure can drastically increase, because air expands at a phenomenal rate with temperature or contracts with a low temperature. The pressure will change a lot depending on temperature. A good example is if you could put something in your fridge or take something out of your fridge. Let's say if you have a bottle at room temperature and you put the cap on that and it's just an empty bottle, it's like a milk bottle or something like that. So it's sealed at room temperature and it's all been ambient, it's been sitting there for a while and you put that in your fridge, it would actually shrink in. And likewise if you get one which is empty basically in your fridge which is ambient and you put the cap on you get it out to leave it on a room temperature it will actually blow up a little bit you'll see it expand that's the air pressure changing because of temperature it's quite phenomenal it's quite surprising how much of a difference it makes that's that we turn this on and off there's a little torch on it so if you're working at night okay and memories it's got memories, okay, cool. Look at that. Nice. So we've got car 32, motorbike 35, push bike 60, a basketball or something. That's eight. Nice, that's nice and quick. Okay. Ooh. Oh, it's only put out a lot of air. <laughs> cool, it works. I'll turn it back off. Like that. Nice. Oh, now I've got the torches on. Turn it off. Lovely. The thing I like about this is it's battery powered and portable. So you can just have it charged up and just take it somewhere. And I, like I've got one right now which is 12 volt powered. So you plug in a circuit light socket. Accessory socket, whatever you call it these days. Be pissy about it. And that's okay, but you've got to mess around with the wire and run it across. Whereas this, at least, you can just take it to where you want and pump it up convenient. So when we had that gauge up before it went up to 65 psi didn't it? Now according to the manual here it can do 125 psi. It says 5 to 125. Is it because it's in that particular preset? Let's try this. Turn it on. It's in a car. Let's do a push bike preset. Can we go up higher from that? Ah oh, there we go. Now it's going higher. So it depends on the preset range as well. So if you're in a different preset, you can go much higher. There we go, that makes much more sense then. And I'll just say there's that preset pressure as well. So, okay, cool. So it's actually adjustable presets. That's brilliant. So this has actually got a really good use for me. Sometimes I need to pump up tires to sort of 85 PSI or so. If you can guess where this one came from, put it down in the comments below. Now it's actually like almost open already. Look, like, I can get my hand in there, and it's ripped here. It's like this tape is not sticky. There's no adhesive on that tape. What's going on with this? <laughs> what kind of tape is this? No adhesive on it. Hmm, that's the weirdest tape ever. What? Like, it isn't sticky. <laughs> Uh, 
Anyway. Some packaging. This Synology device, this is the 10 gigabit network upgrade for my Synergy NAS, DS93+. Plus. I got the 93 Plus recently, and I showed that in a video. I got that instead of the 925. The reason being 95 has got this thing with the Synology drives being a requirement, and it's a bit controversial, and a lot of people aren't very happy about it. It's just a way of forcing people to buy Synology drives. I don't want to use Synology drives, I've already got drives I like. Anyway, so that's why I got the 93 Plus. But this is a 10 gigabit upgrade for it. And I think the 95 can't actually take this, it doesn't have that on it, if I remember rightly. Another reason to choose the uh, 93 Plus. So I can put a 10 gigabit card inside my NAS and then upgrade some more of my network, get better speeds. Most other things. The other thing we've got here is the RAM for it. 4 gigabit NAM. This thing was horrendously expensive. Now apparently it will give warnings for like that if it's got the wrong RAM. If it's got the wrong RAM it'll actually know it's the wrong RAM and they say it'll void your warranty and that sort of rubbish. I know people have used other RAM but I just thought well I'll just get this one. It's a one-off thing. I mean I don't really need it. I mean I've got 4 gig in there now and it's not really doing much apart from doing backups. It's not actually being used as like a media server and all that. Probably didn't really need it, but I was future proofing because this thing's going to be around for a while. And if I've got twice as much RAM in it, it's going to be potentially less of an issue. I mean, obviously, fork is enough for basic functionality because that's what it comes with. But um, I thought I'll chuck another four gig in it because I may want to put in things like SSD cache later on, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But um, these two things are really expensive, but it's future proofing. And the last thing in the box is this thing eight port. 10 gig Ethernet switch. So it's also a managed switch as well. Now I haven't meshed with managed switches before. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's a real HD, but it's 10 gig across all eight ports, which is the main thing I was looking for there. It is again future proofing. If I'm going to put in an expensive switch, well, this is quite expensive compared to a you know, standard 1 gigabit switch or even a 2.5 gig switch. The price for this is quite high. I mean, these three things cost me a thousand dollars right so gives you an idea because i'm going to have 10 gig on the nas i want a 10 gig switch and then i can connect all the devices up on the network through a 10 gig switch now i'm also buying a upgrade for my computer i wished i'd actually bought the option when i purchased a mac mini uh, cm4 mac mini so it's the um, it actually had a higher speed ethernet option when i purchased it I forgot to choose the option so it's not got the highest speed but you can get like a Thunderbolt or USB 4 adapter or something like that you can use there's different options you can use so I'm going to get one of those for it and then I'll connect to this switch through that so that at least the Mac Mini will have a high speed connection to the NAS that's quite important because it does a lot of backups it's quite large files because I'm doing videos like this and so it needs that high speed to get the file transfers done and the backups done a bit more efficiently and being 10 gig between the switch and the NAS, even other devices which are only one gigabit, at least they're going to be sharing a connection more efficiently. So they won't be bottlenecked between the switch and the NAS. I can have multiple devices connecting to the NAS at the same time at a faster speed. So that individual devices don't get bogged down with the speed between the NAS and the switch. It's going to give me an overall bigger increase. So but that's what this is for. Let's open it up. So uh, many switches, like I said before, isn't something I've missed with before. So you got a mounting bracket, nice. Wrong cable, but it doesn't matter. IEC, who cares? It's an IEC cable. Nothing special about that. But the thing about many switches means you can set up things like VLANs. Now I have the ability to do VLANs on my firewall, so there's potential there for me to do some segregation between different network functions. So I've got a net network switch like this, which is a managed switch. I can probably you know, allocate a port to a certain function, like um, the DVR, for example, and um, then create some segregation between circuits. So it's quite a beast, eight ports. But uh, here we go. Fan on the side, vents on that side. I see a port in the back. This is something for to play around with. 
it's certainly fairly large. I've got to uh, painfully wall mount it. <laughs> well, those rack mount ears, they're, they're rack mount ears, aren't they? They're for rack mounting. I don't have a rack. Yeah, so they're meant to go like this on the ends, like this. So you can rack mount the thing. That's why it's got those. Full mounting would be nice. <laughs> Other videos to watch down below. Subscribe over here if you want to be subscribed. And there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to help support the channel. Help me to buy things like, well, help me refund myself, get money for my network. Because the reason I needed this 10 gig stuff is because of doing videos and those big large file transfers I'm constantly doing. So this is because of YouTube really, I need to get this thing. So if you want to support me on my Patreon, it helps because it helps to pay for these sorts of things. Yeah. Get started.